And for Emilie, one of my favorites is the total pink look, uh, the neon one. And because it's the first one that both Patricia and, uh, and Lily were a little bit, are you sure? So I said, if Patricia Field has one minute of doubt, I think this is a bold outfit. Uh, so I really love this one. And, uh, and Lily was really uh, into it. And she said, okay, do you think it's not too pink? I said, yes, it's very pink, but it's a statement, you know, pink, uh, pink shoes, pink socks, pink everything. right now and I'm leaving tomorrow. I will take some holidays be before starting uh, the prep of uh, the season two. Okay, yes, nice. that's that's great. That's yeah. great. So and absolutely. I love the way they presented the renewing with the, yeah. with the letter of Sylvie. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very creative. So it was, a, it, it's a nice team and they did very, uh, very nice things. We all really like it. So, uh, I wanted to know, how did you start your costume design career? Um, I started a long time ago um, and I always knew that I'm, I'm going to do, uh, to do a costume design, but I didn't know how to express it. When I was a child, I was lucky I have a, a grandmother and she has a, an attic. And uh, when my parents sent, uh, sent me to my grandmother's house, I went to the attic. I was the only child and I was bored. So um, I went to this attic and she was keeping, uh, we were, I talked to you, we were in the middle of the seventies and I was like eight, 10 years old, more or less. And my grandmother, she was keeping all her own clothes since the late fifties in very huge closets. So for me as a child, I was opening the, the, the closet and everything was wrapped in a bags, was wrapped in silk paper, in little boxes, sunglasses, scarves, shoes. And in the middle of the seventies to see a pair of uh, stiletto heels was completely incredible. So I spent all my days and my, vocation to uh, to try close on and to imagine stories so by instinct i knew that you can tell stories just by the way and by the clothes you you were wearing so uh, that was one point and after my all the women in my family um, are suing and my grandparents come from spain the immigrant so of course they arrived in France with no money and my grandmother was a nurse and she was very proud and she don't want to show that she has no money, they were broke. And so they, she buy fabrics, cover blankets and, and she sue for, for her kids. And I was educated with this idea that clothes are the way how people see you and their communication and uh, you need to be well dressed to give a, a good image of yourself and be polite and uh, so she was taking care of that and I, I, I never saw my grandmother for instance without lipstick never she was alone watching tv in a rocking chair and she has lipstick mm -hmm. on so uh, I didn't know you can live and it was a real job but I graduated I studied at Ecole du Louvre and I graduated after in textile design. And um, because it was Paris, it was the golden 80s and Paris was very funny at this time. Um, I used to went to the Bandouche, who was a famous nightclub in Paris. And at this time, uh, David Gaeta, who is now a very uh, worldwide <laughs> famous uh, DJ uh, with his wife, uh, Cathy, um, they were giving uh, every one sinner in a month uh, private uh, party and mostly a costuming party. So I went once and I saw it was a 18th century Marie Antoinette party. And I went and I discovered a group of people beautifully dressed with beautiful dresses, gown, uh, incredible wigs, perfect makeup. And I was completely uh, amazed by those people. And uh, 
I said, okay, I, I'm super shy normally, but I said, okay, I need to talk to this to these people and uh, I, I spoke with, I tried to spoke to the lady and of course it's not the best place a nightclub to, uh, to discuss. So she was a, a famous costume designer, a French one, Sylvie de Segonzac, and she invited me to, to go the next Monday to, uh, she has a, a, a rental house. So I went the next Monday to the rental houses. It was, it was amazing. It, uh, it came from a, a father. A father was a French producer and uh, he built that with Bing Crosby because he worked with a lot with the American movie. And when I enter in this, in this very Parisian courtyard, it was, I had the same sensation that when I was in the attic of my grandmother, many beautiful clothes, uh, silk, uh, glitter, feather, everything. So I said, that it's my life. I want to do that. And, um, and she, I was so passionate. And so I was young, I was crazy, passionate. And uh, she said, okay, you, I'm going to take you as an assistant. So I start with her and she teach me many, many things. We did a lot of uh, period movie together. So that's how I was very lucky. <laughs> because yeah, I couldn't imagine my life as a, as a textile designer and be alone, uh, drawing uh, fabrics. Uh, I needed the this physical contact with uh, clothes, with fabrics, uh, more organic than uh, rather than in a in a studio. So you have a very long career um, yeah. in costume design, but can yeah. we say that maybe Emily in Paris is your really break breakout for uh, for the people to to, to know you. Absolutely, absolutely. For the public, yeah. for the large public. So yeah. Yeah. how did you end up taking, uh, taking on a role in this um, amazing series? One day, you, you know, it's, it's simple. Uh, one day you receive an amazing phone call. And I, I, I remember I was on a, a filming uh, in the middle of nowhere, uh, an heroic fantasy movie. A very nice project that I, I have done. And I received a phone call from my agent. It was freezing. I was uh, uh, wake up since four o'clock in the morning and uh, with snow boots, I ate snow boots, I ate cold. And uh, my agent said, okay, are you interested to do a fashion TV show? And I never do that. And I said, it sounds like heaven. You know, yeah. go back to Paris with eels, <laughs> nice street. And uh, I said, um, and I didn't know it was a project with Star and Star and, uh, and Patricia Phil. So, I said, okay, let's let's do that. So I did an interview with Patricia Field and it went incredibly well, I guess. She was looking for someone a little bit un unconventional, let's say that way. And I was experienced. Uh, I, had to, I did two movies in the United States and also I was an expat because I lived uh, 13 years in Mexico and after four years in Portugal. So. I was like the perfect client for this kind of project. So uh, she decided to take me for, for, for the job. So that's what, how. How I was the this. collaboration with Patricia Fields? Because uh, the costume designer uh, is you, no? And uh, Patricia Fields she, is a consultant, she, no? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it was a very rewarding experience and very challenging too, because she's iconic, she's a legend. And um, I needed to find my way between the relationships that she has with Darren. She's like a, a fashion muse and they know each other since a long time. So in those two, I needed to find my place and, uh, and to have my voice heard. Uh, and uh, they were very um, open-minded and um, and we, I think we find the right balance between our two styles. I, I learn a lot of things also, and we exchange a lot because she has this experience in fashion design. I have the expertise in, in French style and, and with all my background. So we mix the two experiences and it was, uh, it was very interesting. Intense also, but interesting. Uh, much of the success of the show uh, it is due to the costumes. Uh, how challenging is to work on Emily in Paris? Um, I think it's challenging like in every project. And I think you choose a project because it, 
ch is challenging and it's frightening you and uh, you have uh, something to prove or to discover or, or something new to to investigate so it's always challenging to uh, to start a new series and to to design new character and character need to be good looking interesting um, and I never did before a fashion show so uh, for those reasons it I needed to represent French chic and I'm not a fashion designer I'm a costume designer so I needed to tell a story through uh, clothes and make it interesting for an American audience, uh, for a French audience, for a worldwide audience. So it was, um, it was a very nice experience to do, <laughs> honestly. So we have three characters very, very different between them. It's uh, Emily, it's Mindy, it's Sylvie. We are going then to analyze every character. So let's start from Emily. She 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 comes in. Uh, she arrives in Paris and she's so American. She saw an American yeah. in Paris with this uh, Tour Eiffel and everything. But we see that she, through the episodes, change her styles and she become this very interesting mix between American, part American, part French, and. Uh, can we explain the, the fashion arc and the costume arc yes. of this character? Uh, uh, yes, I will try to. Uh, Emily's style is very eclectic and we wanted it that way. And she's a young, optimistic uh, girl from Midwest and she suddenly uh, uh, get this job in, in Paris, but we didn't want it to do uh, the transformation scene, I will love to, but we didn't want to do that because we thought that she needed to keep uh, American identity. Uh, she needed to keep uh, a strong character, a strong style, a strong personality. But I think this kind of character knows perfectly what we can call the French code because as soon as she arrived in Paris, when she has uh, very specific events, she uh, she's dressed in black. She's dressed in more uh, not traditional, but in more normal way. Let's put it that way. When she go to the Deleur party, when Sylvie said to her, "I have a very we have a very important shooting today," she put a uh, checkered suit. When she need to go uh, to a, a, the opera house and apologize, she's perfectly dressed. So she know all the code, but. It's how the character, it's very bold because she decides that she don't care about the French rule, about the French chic, that it's for the French. It's for, if they want to be bored with their style, they will be, but she, she constantly uh, keep a style and is in this position of, I'm this, I'm a fish out of the water. You need to accept me. I have to say something because uh, a lot of people talk about Emily as the new Carrie Bradshaw, but I can say something that it is for to me, according to me. I don't know if it's uh, it's true, but I I cannot say that. Okay, there are some notes to Carrie, mm -hmm. but I can say that Emily is not the new Carrie Bradshaw or a copy of Carrie. I I can see it's a character well defined. It's like Carrie is a character and then Emily yeah. Cooper is another character and she's defined. So... Thank you for saying that. Yes, because it's, yes. Uh, we had this, uh, th this feeling at the beginning. Of course, we did like a, a tribute to Carrie Bradshaw with the black tutu and with um, the phone case. It was like, uh, you know, the iconic um, necklace, necklace uh, that Carrie uh, was um, having in, uh, in, in Sex and the City. But it was like a, a wink to uh, the oldest uh, sister, for example. We thought that Emily grew up with um, Sex and the City. She loved the, the Sex and the City. She loves uh, uh, all these kind of, of series, but uh, she knew perfectly which kind of style um, Carrie is, is wearing. But she didn't, she is not a young, uh, copy of Carrie Bradshaw. It's something different. She has her own style. Um, 
Can you describe us uh, <laughs> yes. an uh, usual day in, on the set of Emily in Paris? It's, di it's different working um, with the Americans? Uh, no, I, I was too because I had experience before for in, in American set in the United States. I start very early uh, at the office. I need to be the first one to open the office and I'm the last one and I'm closing the office. It's like a, a religious experience. I need to have one or two hours in the morning alone without any question, any judgment, without any music, just alone. And at this moment, I'm able to, with a fresh mind, to review uh, the fitting picture that we took the day before. Only at this moment, I'm not saturated by ideas, question, and, and everything. So, uh, and after I have fitting, so I go shopping. When um, we are in, in shooting, I go every morning to set. And I think it's very important, I learn with my old age that it was very important to go to set every morning because at this time, at this precise moment, everything can change and you can change everything. Suddenly you discover that the, the, the wall, it's not the same green that the production designer sent to you and um, that the costume that you have correct for this particular scene doesn't work, that a jewel, it's too much that you need to change or to check the, the makeup of the hair. So I always go uh, at the beginning before the shooting. And I think uh, it works that way. Yeah. And how many people work uh, for you for this uh, particular series? Uh, for Emily in Paris, we were like uh, 15, 15 people and around 20 some days when we have uh, a lot of extras. So, but generally we were like 12, 15. It's, wow. it's a, a small crew. It's a small it's crew, a small yes. Crew, no? It's, it's small a small crew. crew. Uh, that is the difference between a, an, a French and an American crew. In an American crew, I will have like a, a five, seven PA and a, a three or four assistant. I didn't have any assistant. So only two shopper with me and a supervisor. So it's in France, it's, a small yeah, crew. We, we do uh, much more things than uh, in the United States. So, so in this, <laughs> in this was challenging to work <laughs> in every place. <laughs> in this way, yes, it was. I That's wanted to talk about uh, another character I love, Mindy, and I think it's a really interesting character because here you have the Chinese new. Um, uh, young people, so it's uh, it's something that we are going to to learn now. So these people, very rich people, uh, young, very young, so they can buy a lot of things. They don't have a sense of style, maybe, or they have their own sense of style. Yeah. Maybe he's Chinese with a Paris Parisian influence. So, how did you create this character? How Mindy, at the, at the beginning, I was not planned to do it this way. Um, as I'm not a fashion designer, I'm a costume designer, so I need to tell a story. So I read a script, I break down my script, and uh, for me, she was a nanny, Chinese, okay, but she was a nanny working for a French wealthy family. Uh, she needs to take the kids to the park, so I was more down to earth with her. And I did a mood board and I sent it to Patricia and it was not approved at all. She said, okay, and it's how I learned to work with Patricia. It's that she has her own sense of reality, her and Darren. And she said, Marilyn, we don't care about reality. Just have fun. Uh, yes, because I, I, I style her, she was, she had a, I remember like, a, oversized jumper with puffalo platform shoes and she was more street style than uh, the character she's right now and i didn't have the, um, the 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 cast yet and when we meet pat was in, in paris at this time and when we met ashley 
and she was so full of energy. She has beautiful legs and suddenly, and she was very sexy. She's a very handsome girl, very pretty girl. So she has a, she has a, a, a lot of colors, a lot of texture also with a kind of a Patricia and myself a trademark. We like to use a lot of colors, a lot, a lot of texture, a lot of patterns, which is not really French, by the way. Um, and um, yes, she's a, probably we will make a, an evolution in season two with this character. Let's talk about the other character. So she's uh, uh, Sylvie. She's a quintessential French. And I, I, I can say this, maybe you have to cut this because I'm Italian, so <laughs> <laughs> I can understand very well French yeah. people. I, I have a, a lot of fun doing uh, Sylvie. Sylvie, she's a great A bitch, honestly. <laughs> and we work a lot, a lot with uh, Philippine about her character. Uh, she has a strong personality also. She, for me, she was like a, a kind of a Bette Davis, a John Crawford character. She don't need it to speak loud, to be listened. She was very intimidating and uh, Philippine was really into her character and uh, allowed me to try many things with her. Um, it, it was usual that we take text, sorry, each other at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning because uh, as I'm, I'm a little bit insomniac. So I was uh, doing shopping in in internet and in the morning I find nice things for the character and I sent, uh, I was sending the picture to Philippine and she answered me at seven, yes, I like it all. Oh, it's it's interesting, uh, l let's try it. So we, we really, she has a lot of input as Lily did also, but Philippine had a, a lot of input and we were loathing because we, you don't born Parisian, you become Parisian. You need to learn certain rules that we know perfectly. And I know those rules, even if I'm not dressed in, in, in black and I don't have a jean and I never wear a jean in my life, but we, we knew that. And uh, we, we needed also to do that, um, understandable for uh, for an audience we couldn't be so uh, drastic with colors we put many colors on sylvie that are outside the french color palette and and darren it's the one who described uh, the better the, the french style he said the national french color black navy and white uh it made a, and people made a, a lot of fun about that so we try to put a little bit more color on Sylvie because if not, she would be too, too black and too black and white. She wears a lot, but we needed to add some color. Uh, in Emily in Paris, there are so many designer pieces, um, both of the rack. But let's talk about the pieces that uh, were created specifically for the show. The, the pieces oh, that have, you created. Yeah. Uh, we have few um, that was few pieces were created for the show. Uh, one dress that Emily is wearing for the auction was uh, designed by uh, Stéphane Roland, Haute Couture, and it was funny because I always dreamed to to work with uh, with Stéphane Roland, but I normally don't have or budget or story to be allowed to use Haute Couture, so it was really a, a big. Uh, I was overwhelmed by the idea to finally uh, meet uh, Stefan and I needed to explain to him that, okay, I wanted a dress uh, for Lily, but I needed in triple and we will make fun about the dress and we will paint the dress. And he has a great sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> he find that everything very, very, very funny. It was very open-minded and uh, he loves, of course, the, the, the work of Patricia and of Darren. So he really opened uh, the door of his studio. In, uh, he borrowed us a lot of uh, drawings and uh, a lot of dresses and accessories for uh, Pierre Cadeau uh, showroom. It was really amazing, the collaboration with, uh, with Stefan. So he did a dress specially with uh, Lily's proportion. She's not a, a six foot uh, model. She's a, a petite um, 
And we have after um, Mindy, she's, she's wearing an outfit, a checker outfit, and we rebuilt something. We, we, we love recycling. And uh, Lily and Mindy and all the actors was very, um, very part of the, the process of uh, buying vintage stuff or buying uh, in second hand shop costume or pieces that we can rebuild, redone, redie, and uh, because we all both, all uh, thought that it's a new way of working now. And uh, you bought and everything from Paris or uh, also from uh, other countries, other um, cities. We bought a lot of in Paris and I do a lot of internet shopping. So okay. yes, I'm an addict to internet shopping. So it, pieces and second hand uh, um, websites. So pieces are coming from all around the world and uh, particularly the, she's wearing a, a pair of Fendi boots and I bought them in Hong Kong. I, um, uh, yes, I purchase everywhere, uh, in rental houses, in uh, in vintage shop, in flea market, in Goodwill. Uh, everything when I saw pieces that give me emotion uh, and uh, who tell me a story, I bought this, uh, I bought the piece. How influential are TV series today in launching uh, fashion trends? Um, I can't speak generally because I only did this uh, uh, fashion uh, TV show, but what I, I see and what I heard from the brands who uh, uh, borrow us clothes or that we are working with, they said that the, the sales increased really a lot. And I'm really happy with the, the, the buried fever that we have in Paris at this moment, <laughs> because I was kind of, of, of uh, shock um, when I, I saw the, 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 the reaction of the French audience. Uh, French people were very uh, offended by uh, the beret that they consider that it's it's a terrible cliche, cliche. and we make fun of of French and uh, uh, they say it's nobody in Paris in France uh, is wearing beret anymore and uh, it's not true. Uh, Camille, who play uh, Camille uh, in the Camille Hazard, who is playing Camille in the series, she's a very hip girl, a very fashionable girl, and she uh, you can check her Instagram and she's wearing the beret. Uh, uh, many, many times in her life. And in France, we, we were buried since the 18th century. And uh, in the late 30s, women started to wear beret. So for me, it's, it's a beautiful accessory. And it was a way to, as Emily couldn't speak French, to it was a way to express how she loved French culture. And I get that because when I, I, I moved to Mexico, I didn't speak any Spanish. I was also an expat, a fish out of the water. And my only way to communicate with people and to show how much I love their culture, it was uh, wearing pieces of handcraft. So I bought a rebozo, I bought food peel, and, uh, and I couldn't express better than that how much I was feeling comfortable in their, in their country. So. I think I thought Lily could do, uh, Emily could do the same and by wearing a beret. So now it's become very fashionable and many brands. And I saw this afternoon that the French shoes brand is uh, offering a beret if you buy a pair of shoes. So it was very funny to see that. But at the end, it will become an, uh, another respectful, uh, respectable um, accessories. And I'm, I'm really happy about that. And uh, where did the costumes go after Emily's production is uh, wrapped? The beret, for, for uh, example, the red beret? Everything, uh, everybody, wants to know. The red beret. everybody wants to know where everything goes. Uh, the red beret. So the red beret is sadly packed with a, a lot of uh, uh, all the costumes um, are packed and we didn't know that we will do a, a season two, but everything was sent to the production. And of course, we can't use any more any of the costume for season uh, season two. But I think because we never have enough time and enough money, we will reuse some of the main men's costume from the background. 
you know a day for uh, when you will start the um, prep the prep or not really no 100 percent sure we probably will uh, start prep in march if everything it's okay in this crazy world that we are living yes. Uh, we don't know, but I hope that we can start to prep in um, in around March. So I have some ideas now, and I try to to think about things because we we need to we can't repeat what we have done before. So we need to find some strong idea. Uh, I have some young designer that I really like to uh, to have on the show. Um, and we will see what we have, uh, what Taryn has in mind with his uh, screenwriter. <laughs> we need, I find beautiful location and beautiful designer. So now I need to have story to be able to put those beautiful outfits. <laughs>